Thank you, Astro Boy. That'll be all. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Today's gonna be a fairly short episode because there's basically one thing I want you to know. Now I'm putting this inside of the advanced playlist because at this point in which you need this information that I'm about to give to you, you most likely are making your glazes already and you might need this little piece of information. You see this glaze right here? This is a glaze that I recently made and tested. It's called John Britt's Cone 6 Copper Red and I recently found it. I'm madly in love with it and I'm trying to recreate it as I did here. But this time, instead of making a 300 gram batch, I'm trying to make something like 5,000 grams of a batch. And as you usually would when you're making your own glazes, you go to the store, you buy a little bit more of the chemicals that you need to make that glaze, and you figure out how much you need versus how much you have. This is the chemical bentonite, and this is one of the primary things that you need for this glaze. But I didn't turn on my camera just to show you guys these two things. Get to the point, Dante! I went to the ceramic shop to buy more bentonite because clearly this is not enough to make 5,000 grams. And when I asked for Ben tonight, they gave me this right here. You are probably already seeing a massive difference in these two. This change in color is fairly normal. These chemicals are dug up from the ground, from the earth, and filtered a tiny little bit and made for resale. I mean, it's not really resale because nobody sold it to you in the first place, but you did take it from the earth, so you are re-something. The only reason I turned on my camera today was to show you the difference in between these two of the same chemical and the difference in color. The reason there was a difference in color is because the corporation or the company that dug up this chemical most likely changed pits. A pit is majoritively the word that potters use to identify a single source in which the chemical comes out of. And each and every time that pit goes dry or there's not enough chemical in there, you have to change pits. For example, this chemical right here is called F. For Kona feldspar and it's one of the purest feldspars on the market except for that's kind of a lie because it's not really on the market anymore the pit where most of us got this goodness right here is dry we don't have it anymore so because of this if you go to most ceramic stores and ask for F4 Kona feldspar they most likely will just give you custard feldspar instead because the actual F4 Kona feldspar the good pure stuff is no longer available we don't have that pit anymore but when I was testing this glaze, I tested it with this bentonite right here. And it doesn't seem, unless I want to travel extra far to go to another ceramic shop, that I can get this bentonite anymore. It seems as though the company or whoever produces this changed pits. So now I have to work with this bentonite. And even though it is technically the same chemical and still made up of the same elemental properties, there are still most likely small minor changes. And most of you know, even the smallest of changes can have adverse effects on your ceramic artwork. So now that this glaze has been tested with this bentonite, I now have to make an entirely new batch to test it with this bentonite. This is the real importance of making small tester batches in order to test your glazes. Imagine if I got a giant bucket and made 5,000 grams with this bentonite and it came out nothing like this, simply because it's dug out from a different pit. Dante, surely there's some kind of list these companies make to tell us exactly the changes in the chemical elements in comparison to the pits they changed. No, there's not. In fact, the majority of the time potters get their chemicals, these are the leftovers from what they're trying to dig up. If there's a company somewhere that owns a coal mining industry and they're digging for coal, any of the access that they find can be sold as access chemicals to people who need them, like potters. Half of the time, you're honestly just buying leftover chemicals from original mining processes. It's not like they opened up the ground and they're looking specifically for bentonite. Bentonite is most likely the leftovers from what they were actually digging for. The sad news is that each and every pit technically differs a little tiny bit, and your job is to test that little tiny bit with different badges. But Dante, don't they at least tell you? No, Astro Boy. They don't tell you. The only reason I know they changed pits or changed locations of where they got this bentonite from is because they're so differently colored. It's not like they let out a newsletter telling every potter in the world to make sure they retest their glazes for these new chemicals or the new pit that they're digging out of. Okay, well now I'm sad because there's not a lot of information out there for potters and it kind of seems like big companies don't care unless they can make a lot of money off of it. 
Yes, you are absolutely correct, which is why it's extremely important to support websites like Digital Fire and Glazy and artists that give you information. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I know this was an extremely short video, and the entire point of the video was pretty much just telling you guys to make sure that you test your glazes a little bit more whenever it changes pits. And I feel like a lot of you didn't even know that companies change pits and don't tell you. Sometimes my glazes act up, and I have to go ask the company themselves if they change the pit that they got the chemical from, and then figure out which chemical changed. Because sometimes it really does matter. That's the entire point of testing my glazes over and over and over again. Even glazes that are tried and true that I trust and I've been using for years will sometimes act a little bit differently and I have no idea why until I really test and sieve and look at the chemical thoroughly. To boot, to my knowledge, there's no newsletter, there's no emails, and there's no public announcement telling you guys they changed pits or the little bit of difference that it would be in this bentonite versus this bentonite. There's no actual announcement. You just have to keep testing your glazes. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork, much like this, the links are all down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And of course, we have a Facebook community, and we also have a brand new Discord community. If you'd like to talk to other Dirty Potters there, we have plenty of glaze recipes and a bunch of other experienced people who are down to help you down below. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Remember to test your glazes, and I'll see you later. Dante, tell us the glaze recipe for this bowl. It looks so nice. Okay, two things. Number one, this is one glaze. Okay, number two, no.